This is the Jocko DMZ podcast episode one. <laughs> Sitting here with Echo Charles. So I get a random text from you, Echo Charles. I get a random text from Echo. And it says, the whole world thinks you're on steroids. <laughs> Which I, I it's, there's no context around it. Yeah. And I wrote back, why is that? Or something along those lines. And then you sent me the link to this YouTube video um, of more plates, more dates, which is the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And it's this video. And they're trying to um, decipher whether I'm on steroids Mm -hmm. or on TRT. So uh, I laughed. It was funny. It was funny. And the, the subtitle of it is he trains three times a day, sleeps five hours, and is fucking huge. That's the yep. <laughs> that's the title of it. And it's funny. Uh, it's so I laughed, smiled a little bit, and it's it's kind of funny for me to people to think I'm on steroids or on um, testosterone. Um, it's a good compliment because I'm not, and uh, I don't have anything. I, I don't have anything against people that. Do steroids unless you're like uh, competing in a sport where you're not supposed to. You do that kind of stuff, and then I don't really. Yeah, then you shouldn't do it. But I know a lot of people that are on, either are on steroids, have been on steroids. I know a lot of people that have been on TRT. Which interestingly, the fact what I'm saying right now yeah. is one of the things that this guy, his name is Derek, and I've watched a bunch of his videos before. Yeah, um, randomly. Uh, he's a well-educated guy. He's a smart guy. He's pretty funny too. Yeah. Um, but he that's one of the things that he sort of mentioned when he makes his conclusion, mm-hmm. which the the conclusion of the video is, and I for, I'll, I've got the exact quote written down here somewhere. It's kind of like, yeah, he's probably done steroids and he's almost definitely on TRT which was his conclusion, which was interesting because the guy does have a lot of knowledge about this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's weird because even as he was saying, coming to this conclusion, you got a lot of you, he kept backpedaling a little bit, but then kind of moving forward, backpedaling a little, moving forward. Now, here's the deal. I don't really care what, I think it's kind of funny and whatever. There's all, you're always gonna have stuff said about you on the internet. But here's where I was a little bit concerned, is if you're a person that's, let's say you're a, a 18 year old kid and you think Jocko's cool mm-hmm. and you hear this thing, then maybe people are starting to think, oh, well, you know, Jocko uses steroids, just mm-hmm. watch this video. Or if you're a person that's in the military or in law enforcement where you're putting your job in jeopardy to use steroids or use dr- uh, these kind of drugs, then that's bad. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to have that out there where people are like, well, you know, Jocko uses them. Right. Because that's the, the conclusion. So, um, yeah, I wanted to like at, go through it a little bit and see how we ended up in this situation where uh, where we're at. Uh, what do you, That's a good point there where I didn't really think about it in that depth where, yeah, who, who cares? Especially nowadays, we're, bro, take, take whatever you, you like. Unless you're literally cheating on something, something yeah, yeah, yeah. official or whatever, bro, just do your thing. Um, but, yeah, so if – if you're doing it and everyone else is doing it and it's so like normal in life or whatever. Yeah. Who's the, what's to that'll influence younger people, less knowledgeable people to be like, Oh, everyone does it. Even Jocko, Mm -hmm. this pillar of integrity, you know, in their mind, all this stuff. And so that's how normal it is. And you know, it's some influence. It's like false influence, you know? Yeah. So that made me feel like, Oh, maybe we should, we should talk about it a little bit Um, because that's not cool. Uh, cool. The, so how the let me just give my background a little bit just kind of so people understand um so when i was a kid i was a hardcore kid i was a straight edge kid if you don't know what that means that means i didn't drink i didn't smoke i didn't smoke pot i didn't do anything like that mm-hmm. i was into hardcore music and i was what's called straight edge back in the day so, so that's that's the beginning. Now, if I was into other kind, if I was into uh, uh, metal, which I was into metal, but I moved past the metal very quickly and into hardcore mm. and got into that scene. And so I was in that scene, my friends were in that scene, there we are. And guess what, when you're in that scene, you're not drinking, you're not doing drugs. So there's my high school years. Yeah. You know, like they're, they're done. 
Then what do I do? Well, then I join the military. So when you join the military, guess what? You can't do drugs. <laughs> uh, I, now, I drank when I was in the military. I drank a lot. <laughs> Probably drank too much. Oh, yeah. But if you get caught doing drugs in the military, you get kicked out of the military. Even steroids. Even steroids. Even steroids. Um, now, again, when look, I, people want to do drugs. I got all kinds of friends that do drugs. I got all kinds of friends that do drugs. I got friends that smoke pot all day long. Um, I got friends that drink a lot. I got friends that do mushrooms and acid and all kinds of crazy shit. And I don't, I, I'm, these are my legitimate friends. But I don't do that stuff. So I don't hold anything against them. And I got a lot of friends that have used steroids for sure and use steroids for sure. People that I train with sometimes. People that are on TRT. I know all these kinds of people. I don't, I, don't, I don't hold one single grudge against them. When someone beats the shit out of me on the mats, or roughs me up, and I think, well, you know, I, oh, that guy's probably on steroids, or is on steroids, mm-hmm. which, by the way, they t- they'll tell me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was, uh, you know, I, I'm, on, I'm going to cycle. Oh, cool. You know, I, don't, I don't have any animosity towards that person. But in the Navy, in the military, you can't do that. And there was a bunch of comments in these sections that were about, Everyone in the military is on steroids, right. which was crazy for me to read. It was crazy for me to read. Um, but okay, so I'm in the military. If you use drugs, if you use steroids, you can get kicked out. There was no way I was ever going to sacrifice or put at risk my military career doing the job I loved because I wanted to be a little bit bigger. And by the way, I was pretty big. <laughs> you know, like I wasn't. I was good to go. I wasn't in this situation where I was like, oh no, I hope I can, you know, be a little bit stronger. I wasn't in that situation. I wasn't in a situation where I was like, oh, I hope I can be a little bit more jacked. I was as jacked as I thought I could, needed to be to do my job. Do you know anyone that got in trouble, I don't know, kicked out, whatever, for steroids? I know know guys that got in trouble. I don't know if anyone got kicked out. Um, I know that it was quote, hard to test for, they'd say, right? They'd be like, it's really hard to test. Um, So what they would do is they would take, this is alleged, right? This is is what I'd hear. And this is the kind of stuff that I just need to hear this one time and I'd be like, okay, cool. What they do is it's really expensive to test for steroids. So they would test 100 samples. They'd mix them all together and test for steroids. And if it was in there, then they'd do an individual test for each one of them to save money. So I hear that and I'm like, okay, so they're testing. I don't, I'm not gonna do this yet. Um, and, and by the way, like, of all my close friends in the SEAL teams, mm-hmm. there's not one of them, I'm trying to think, I, I can't even think of any of them that was, like, doing steroids. I knew a guy. I, I knew guys that were peripheral friends, like, oh, yeah, this guy, oh, yeah, yeah, dude, he's juicing. Mm-hmm. And I, quite frankly, these were the people that were... In some cases, it was like, oh, yeah, maybe if I was him, we'd be getting on the shit, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you were, like, maybe you weren't as jacked, or maybe you didn't like working out as much as I did, or maybe you didn't, you know, you just were, didn't have the genetics to walk around at 210, 220, right? And if you don't have that, maybe you're like, bro, you know, and you're hanging around with a bunch of guys that are jacked. So, so occasionally, you said you knew a, a team guy? A, a team guy who got busted for steroids and got kicked out okay. straight up. Well, there you go. Yep. There you go. And I worked. he worked with me. He yep. told me the whole story. He yep. went down to, and it was weird. They didn't do it through a test, though. Mm-hmm. And this is how I sort of found out, I guess. It's not like I was looking for the answer or nothing like that. But this is how I found out that, yeah, steroids are no, are no go. Yep. The teams, at least. Because he went down to Mexico to get them. That's mm-hmm. where he would always get them. Mm-hmm. And then... This this is the story he told me where he'd go there, inject them in Mexico, and then um, he felt bad about throwing away all the needles and stuff. Mm-hmm. So he'd keep like the needles in the trash and stuff, like in his like bag or in his pockets or whatever. Oh, the conscientious lawbreaker. I know, really. <laughs> That's what he what said. What a bummer, yeah. Um, and then so he'd have like the used like needles or whatever. And then he so when he came back, they caught. They caught him. They mm-hmm. were like, oh, you came here for sure? This was like a long time ago, like 90-something. They being the, the law enforcement or something? Law enfor- okay. Yeah, the border guys yep. or whatever. This Actually, this is like maybe 2002, maybe. Mm-hmm. This is when I, when I knew him and stuff, worked with him. And then, yeah, he said that, and I was like, oh. 
the story was weird. Like, that's a weird way to get caught, but whatever. And he got caught, and then they reported it and all this stuff, and he got kicked out. Yeah, that's... I would occasionally know of, like, Marines that were doing it. Occasionally, man. But it was not legal. I do know that. Like, you, yeah. if you got in trouble for it, you were getting kicked out. But is it the same now, though? Because, let's face it, yes. that was a different day. Yes. Oh, shit. It is the same now. Oh, shit. It is the same now. Now, do guys have more knowledge maybe where they can like know how to skirt the system or whatever? Yeah. That is possible. But v- with me, my friends, bro, like, and my friends were in good freaking shape. You know, oh, yeah. we were yeah. lifting hard and whatever, like trying to be jacked. And yeah. you know what else? We're young. And you know, when you're 18 years old, you're basically on steroids anyways because you have so yeah. much freaking testosterone in your system. Yeah. So we're, we're big. So, so that was my... Um, so that was my Navy career. I'm not doing something that's gonna put my whole life at risk. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. So then I retire, and now when I retire, I got a wife and kids and houses and businesses and all this stuff going on. I actually, that's pretty much when I stopped drinking, when I retired from the teams. Now all of a sudden I don't have any of that, that type of friendship directly all the time. Yeah. And I'm just like, mm, and plus I'm a little bit older, and I'm looking around going, okay, what benefit am I getting out of this? And I'm. It's just a totally different scene. So I, I, I didn't like one. I didn't retire and go like I'm never drinking again. Right. I just looked up in a month and I had like oh you know I had a couple of beers here and then two months later I had a few beers and a couple of drinks at this place or I met a client we had some whatever whatever it was. But then after like probably another year I just looked up and I was like oh wait it's been another four months it's been six months and then all of a sudden I wasn't drinking anymore and and so that was that and I and still was just like. I'm not doing any other drugs either. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's what happened. And that's that's how my life has gotten to this point where I really, I I haven't done, not only have I not done steroids, I've never done any drugs other than alcohol and (laughs) caffeine, right? Which caffeine, again, it's like, I I use that at certain times. I don't just drink caffeine all the time. Um, But, Back to this video, it's uh, it's interesting. <laughs> it's an interesting video, and it's you can see this guy. His name is Derek. It seems like a good dude. Like I said, uh, I've watched some of his. Uh, his thing is natty or not. <laughs> natty or not? Hell yeah! Because <laughs> natty means natural. <laughs> yes, sir. And not means you're. What do they keep saying? Other words for it, like enhanced. Enhanced. Assisted. And then they got all. Then I called all these other slang words yeah, for. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty funny. Um, and what, what's your experience with the sauce, with the gear, yeah. with the steroids? Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. Okay. So Which, by the way, I, I actually mentioned this to you, too. Yeah. It had to be a little bit of a bummer that this guy does this whole video about <laughs> steroids and you're in the video and he didn't mention you once, bro. <laughs> I was like, this is going to hurt. Echo's going to be crushed. <laughs> Whatever, man. Well, whatever. They mentioned it in the comments. So, boom, okay. Boom. You made the comments. No, the you grid. made the comments. No, I think no. maybe you're up next for Natty or uh, not. Yeah, Freaking yeah. Echo Charles. Uh, what? Well, <laughs> so I don't know. You tell me if I've ever taken steroids because it's one of those weird things. Mm-hmm. So okay. So when I was 22, I'm 44. I'm about to be 44, mm-hmm. by the way, right now. I was 22 years old. I was working as a valet. I remember this very. And I was into lifting, and I was yeah. big at this point. <laughs> like right What'd now, I was 240 okay. at that time. Yep. And we were lifting. You know, my mm. boy Squatty Lewis, aka yes. Scotty Lewis, uh, Kona Police Department. I forget his position, but man, shout out, yeah. Uh, he, w- it was me, him, and this other guy, Rinder Brooks. We'd lift, and we were lifting hard. That was like the. Bro, whole you thing. about to rat out Squatty Lewis for doing juice? No, 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 no. Okay. No, he was. That, these are just my lifting partners. Oh, okay. I'm check, saying you it. can confirm with him too. Yeah, in okay, fact, check, after check, the check. video, I called him up. I was yeah. like, bro, <laughs> all right, my numbers. Do I remember this correctly? Oh, he was okay. like, bro, okay. he squatted more than me uh-huh. a little bit, and then and um, Squatty, Squatty Lewis <laughs> all day. Um, he uh, so anyway, so we'd lift a lot, and um, so. There were other guys. There were like a number of guys who would who would do steroids. Mm-hmm. Not that would lift with us, but and they were big and they were strong. And I remember I got up to 240, and you know in Hawaii everyone's kind of bigger mm-hmm. just in general. So I remember thinking if I could get up to like 260, 255, Damn, that'd be a solid like 260 is big. 260 yeah. is a big human, bro. I have a, I have the picture of of me 240, mm-hmm. and the thing is I don't look that big. Yeah, most I ever got to was 250. Yeah, I was at team two. The most I weighed in was <laughs> two forty seven. I was at team two. We were trying to get our platoon weight average over two hundred pounds, uh. and everyone was just <laughs> squatting. Oh yeah, and just freaking eating. Oh, yeah. But yeah. you know what? Even then, we weren't juicing. 
Yeah. We weren't juicing. Yeah. No, we were just and, lifting and eating. And I finally got to 250, did a four mile run, and I about died. And I was like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was not, my frame is not meant for 250. Yeah. And mine wasn't either. Okay. So think. you're at 240, you're lifting heavy. But yeah. You know, and you kind of cap out. And, um, and, you know, when you kind of, when you get that kind of game, because when I stopped playing football, I was like 185. Five Damn. 190. So you put on 60, 50 pounds. This is over like about a year. Yeah, yeah. but still, that's a lot. there's it's no a one lot. that's complaining oh, about yeah. 50 pounds of gains. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all natural. Yeah. All like for real. All, I yeah. mean, you know, you get your kid. I remember there's a supplement called Betagen, mm-hmm. you know, that I remember taking because mm-hmm. um, my friend recommended it, whatever. Oh, well, if we're going to bring up, I remember when uh, when creatine came out. Yeah. I was on the I think creatine. Betagen had creatine. Yeah, I think it did too. I was on the creatine. Yep, trying to get jacked. Yeah, fully. But here's the thing. Like, okay, so the workout program that I was on is a very effective workout program. It's still like I still do it today, even just for maintenance. Mm-hmm. But it is it is hard, bro. You know what? I just want to interject this thing. When guys are in SEAL training right now, they're not allowed to take. Um, they're not allowed to take supplements. No shit. Because I guess along the way, someone, you know, pop pause me. They're like, well, I was taking this supplement over here. Oh, and, right, right. and so they just like, okay, like guess what? Batch. No supplements. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dirty batch, that whole thing. They see that. So, yeah. so when you say like, are, is it less stringent? That to me indicates hell no. Oh, right. You huh? know? Yeah, yeah. Right? They don't even let you do supplements. Yeah. Can't even TRT. freaking take milk for crying out loud. Shh. You need to make a waiver for that. Yeah. All right. All right. So, long, long story yeah. short, I was like, hey, yeah, some other guys that I knew and respected, like they were kind of doing it. Yeah, this, is, this is in 19, I don't know, 99 or mm-hmm. something like that. And I remember thinking, yeah, if they're doing it, you know, like, sure, I'll, you know. So I kind of hit them up or whatever. And um, and so they got me, if I'm, I'm remembering the name correctly of it, because there's a bunch of mm. different kind of steroids, yeah, apparently. Yeah. I, I did not know this. And it was like sus, dis, sus, mm-hmm. and something. Mm-hmm. And it was like these little vials, and then you got to get, like, needles. Yeah. And they're like, hey, get the big needle. This, ne- you know, the big mm-hmm. needle, that's the good one. And I was like, when I was 12, long story, when I was young, I got a traumatic experience with a bunch of blood tests because they, they had to do a bunch of surgeries on my hand for some stuff. So they blood test me a lot and they missed the IV a lot. And so this is when I was 12. So I did not like needles at this point. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, I guess that's what we're doing. So cool. So um, so my friend, he would he stuck me with it, the first one. Boom, mm-hmm. puts it in or whatever. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like, it's worth it. It was no, no problem if someone mm-hmm. else does it. Mm-hmm. You know, like, okay. So I'm like, cool. I think... I don't, Brad. I didn't do research on this kind of stuff. <laughs> I just, I just seen the, the other guys doing yeah. it and how strong and big and, and I was like, of course it works or whatever. So, boom, he sticks me with one, and I'm like, cool. To me, the next day I'm gonna be lifting way more than I was yesterday, like 100. percent So I go in there and I'm like, Brad, I'm not even stronger. It's like the next day. So I'm like, <laughs> all right, cool. So it was just one shot, and then one, two, three days, and then the next week comes around, and I'm not stronger at all. So I'm like kind of disappointed, but mm-hmm. then I'm like, oh, maybe it takes a little while to kick in, whatever, mm-hmm. right? So the next week, I go again. I had another shot, boom. So I go. I'm working out. My same because I know the workout is very regimented. So mm-hmm. I'm like, and each workout, you kind of, it's like you're going for a PR every single day. It's it's for a certain amount of reps and stuff like that. This is just the nature of the workout. So I remember freaking not even exceeding my old PR, like all this stuff. Like I wasn't getting stronger at all. And I was like super, and I'm freaking sticking, getting stuck with like needles and doing steroids at this point. So I'm like, oh, frick. All right. So the third week comes around and I get, uh, he does one more and I'm like, cool. And I go and still nothing. In fact, one day I had a bad day, like I had a weak day. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this, bro, these are not working. But I'm like, whatever. Maybe I just got to do more. Maybe, maybe I got to buy some more. Maybe it takes um, takes longer than I thought. Mm-hmm. Then, so my friend, the next week, my friend is out of town. He went like somewhere. And I'm like, uh, I don't want to tell anyone. I'm going to tell anyone, oh, dude, can you do this? Can you stick this in my butt or whatever? <laughs> and so I'm like, I got to do it. I got to do it. So I'm like, <laughs> so I'm sitting in my room. That's like, going to be a bad shit. edit right there, that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking that. So this was shot number four. I'm on, uh-huh. right? I think it, the number was 250. Susta something 250. That's what mm-hmm. this compound was. So I'm like in my room, like trying to do it. I can't do it. I can't bring myself to do it. I need someone to do it. But I'm like, no. I'm gonna sat. You know, like I can lift. I'm strong. I was strong already. And I, so I think I'm like tough or whatever. And why is this needle defeating me? So I'm like, no. I'm gonna do it. And I. F- 
bro, I couldn't do it. <laughs> it took me like one hour to just give up and be like, I, I can't, I can't do it to myself. And my friend was out of town for like three weeks. It was like for the, uh. you know, for, for a long time. And so I just put it away. And then, you know, you kind of reflect like, what am I, I don't really get what mm. I'm doing right now. Mm. I want to kind of reflect. And then, so I still had like three, four or five more shots like left in the, mm. in the little packages or whatever. Those are probably still hidden in the mattress <laughs> in Hawaii <laughs> somewhere or somebody found them or whatever. But yeah, never did. Did those three shots, uh-huh. no gains. In <laughs> fact, had a fucking bad day. That's, that's what really yeah. made me sad. Like, I'm like, bro. Th- I can see if I maintain and it didn't kick until later, but I had a bad day. I remember like thinking, are these making me weaker or something? It was probably because I didn't rest or didn't eat or whatever that good, but it, no gains, no benefit, no nothing, no side effects, mm-hmm. no nothing. I'm expecting to get roid raging, you know, cause I was like yep. cruise, I was pretty cruise mellow of a person. So I'm thinking, oh, maybe I'll, I'll be more angry and that'll be cool. You know, like more and more, more like comf, comf, what do you call it? When you confront people more yep. confrontational, mm-hmm. you know, that'll help my little personality or whatever. <laughs> nothing, nothing like no effects at all. Like if, if that, if I found out later that those, that batch was like fake, or mm-hmm. not real. I'd be oh, that makes sense to me because it didn't affect. So anyway, that was it. That was my whole steroid experience. Um, but technically, Echo, have you ever taken steroids? Mm. Yeah, that's it. That is one hundred percent of my steroid experience. So I had a similar assessment. So I was on my on I was on deployment, mm. and there was like guys that in another platoon, and they went on a trip somewhere, and again like. The reason I, I didn't bring this up when I talked about my close friends, like these guys were in a different platoon. I knew them, they were good guys and everything, but like a couple of them, when they went on this trip, they juiced, right? Yeah. And they and they came back and they're like, and the rumor was like, hey, these guys are freaking doing steroids. And I was like, oh, sh-. you know, I'm thinking the same thing you are. Like these guys are gonna freaking just get jerked. Yeah. yeah, hell yeah. But <laughs> they weren't, <laughs> they yeah. weren't. I was kind of like, uh, yeah. really? That That's like, so to me now I talked about the risk earlier of getting caught now. I'm gonna risk getting caught And it's over yeah. nothing yeah. So that was another thing and then and then there was a guy that was in the regular Navy and he was a freaking good duty I, He was from I want to say he was from American Samoa Samoa oh, yeah. Super cool guy we used to hang out and he was jacked and he was telling me he was like No, man, like you should do a little bit he was like saying you should do because that's what he was like. Look, man, I just do a little bit, and it you know gets me from from you know two oh five to two twenty five. But to me, that's a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. But yeah. that, what he was saying, yeah, I just do you know, and that keeps me like I'm ripped. And but he was trying to convince me. He was like one of the early of just like just do a a small dose, and that what, what he was saying was a small dose. But yeah. again, I was just like, yeah, dude, like I'm already to fifteen. I need to squat more before I risk my whole career. Yeah, that's a big deal. To gain ten pounds, that's freaking crazy to me. So yeah, so that was that. Um, but it in I'll I'll say this too. Back in the um, back when when I did that, mm-hmm. I was already two forty, and the numbers, which I don't know if you're going to go into the video that Derek was was yeah, yeah, referencing, yeah. but yeah. and we went into some numbers. And I was already doing those numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's when I was reached my peak, and then I was like, okay, let me take something found it in myself to be like yeah let me take something to get more you know so i did it whatever and since then literally that was i'm 22 years old at the time mm-hmm. so since yes. then yeah. just going that's yeah. all i did was work valet and lift mm-hmm. um so since then but i i got back when i moved to the mainland i cut all the way to or even before i moved i cut all the way back down in fact i remember being under 200 pounds here on purpose really just oh, to like be more cut the, up no, and just that was the look go. it was ah, you know look at that guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so so uh i'm talking about what you just said the video right so there's the I forget what the name of it. I think the name of the video is "How Much Can Jocko Lift?" The skinny, which and is skinny and it's skinny knees is kind of like what I call that video, yeah, yeah. which is how this video by Derek starts off, and it has this little clip. And just to give a little context around this clip, the whole way that thing started was me talking about squatting. Yes, the reason I came into work 
talking about squatting because I was on a on this on the squat train. Here, well, here's before even uh-huh. that, that. This is important to know because uh-huh. Derek does gets this wrong in the video. Mm-hmm. He refers to it as the podcast. Like oh, we yeah, were yeah. talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, this yeah. on the podcast. This was not the podcast. True. It wasn't literally. This was the point before the podcast. Before we start the podcast, we're just talking trash. Yeah. And if you watch that whole video in the beginning, yeah, you're like right. saying it's weird. I don't even feel like. Um, putting on headphones today. That's how we start the yeah. video. Like, well, this is not the podcast. This is before we're doing it. And then we're talking about, oh, this book and I'm drinking coffee. I'm getting things ready and all this stuff. Is, that the, is this one where you say like, do I look small? Yes. Is that the video? Yep. Because yep. exactly. isn't, isn't there another video or there was another time where I was talking to you about like, do you even squat? Or maybe it's the same video. It's the same video. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because, okay, the reason I said squat train, and this is something I've talked about before. I go in, I go on different, paths of working out right like for a while i'll just be like trying to do certain types of pull-ups or certain numbers of pull-ups then i'm trying to you know uh do muscle ups then i'm trying to do heavy deadlift then i'm trying to squat then i'm trying to sprint like i'll go through these little phases just to keep myself entertained different challenges and also let's face it you get to a certain point you kind of reach your genetic capability or you you get close to your genetic capability potential that's what we call it. Potential. And then you're like, it's going to put, you You know, okay, you get to you get to a deadlift of, f- you know, 495. And you're deadlifting 495 and you want to get to 500. All of a sudden you got to go, okay, cool, I'm not running. I need right. to just eat. I need to gain 30 pounds. You're like, you're going to do some things that are going to compromise other aspects of your life. Yes. Your jiu-jitsu game, your cardio game, your running. So I have, you know, I go on these different little uh, uh, trains these different cycles of working out and at that point clearly I was just like in a mode where I was trying to just get 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 my squat on so yeah, yeah. I was front squat back squat overhead <laughs> squat and I was talking that kind of shit to you yes and that's another funny thing is uh, the dynamic of you and me talking there's a dynamic there right yeah. and I'm trying to you know poke fun at you, yeah. make you feel insecure, oh, yeah. have fun with the whole situation. That's why the whole video starts off with you saying like, do I look skinny? Right. And I, without missing a beat, yeah. like without missing a beat, I'm just like, yeah, are you trying to cut weight right now? Yeah. Without missing a beat. Yeah. Like this is clearly just me. Like you, I can't tell if you gained or lost 10 <laughs> pounds, you know what I mean? But in my mind, I'm like, oh, I got a little insecurity yeah. over here. I'm gonna pounce on that thing. And that's the same thing. Why when you're like 405 for 10, and I'm like, that's good. I mean, it's the same thing. I'm kind of like, you know, talking a little bit of shit, making you feel like, oh, damn. <laughs> Just it was, it was providing for t- some uncomfort for you. It was for 12, um, by the way. Was it for 12? Yeah. Okay. I confirmed it the other day. So, and again, you mentioned this to me. The In the video, I'm like, yeah, I'm a little below there. Mm-hmm. And then Derek on the video, goes, what's he talking? 375? And, and then... Later in the video. Oh, it was for 10 on the video. Yeah, right. the video. Yes, yes, sir. Later in the video, I'm like, that would really hurt me. Right. Because I started thinking about it. Because the, the conversation went a little bit from me just talking shit and yep. to you into like a serious conversation where I'm like, hey, yep. 375 for 10 would hurt me. Right. Um, that being said, I went and checked. I was like, like going through some of my records and I found, because I do 10 reps for me is not something I would normally do. Right. I do 20 reps. Yeah. And I, f- I was looking at some of my old numbers and, um, 305 for 20. It was like something something that I have done. Yeah. 385 for 20. The, and there's a that's a that's a heavy freaking squat for 20. Oh sorry, 285. Yeah, what did yeah. I say 385? Yeah. No, I didn't. Do that. Well, well it, and here's the thing. This is a good point too that you I, I think it's important to realize. It's subtle, but it's a big deal where we were not and I, this is why I mentioned this wasn't part of the podcast. Mm-hmm. If this was part of the podcast, you better get your numbers oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're talking shit. Just, yeah, just like talking it, shit. <laughs> it literally like whether that got recorded or didn't re- get recorded, there is no difference given the importance of the of the information that mm-hmm. we're going back and forth. Just like literally when I said when I'm like doing this and I'm like, Do I look smaller? And you're like, Yeah. <laughs> or you couldn't wait, wait, like all this stuff. See, you're totally lying. It's like it, it, this is shit. an unofficial off the record conversation, hundred percent. So M- more than that, a shit talking. Shit if talking. you were like, "Hey, Jocko, I want to improve my squat. Right. What should I do?" Right. I wouldn't be like, "Bro, you need to, you know, here. Oh, you, if you can't do four hundred five for ten, you're weak." Right. I wouldn't say that. I'd be like, "Well, where are you at right now? Right. Hey, if you're getting this, that's freaking legit." Blah blah blah. Yeah. So it's a shit talking um, evolution, anyways. Right. But um, I also say in that, and he plays this part. 
where I'm like, I'm not strong, right? I say that, I said, I'm not strong. And then we talk about cross, I'm like talking about what the CrossFitters can do, and yeah. So, uh, there's, yeah, so I'm not strong. Just, oh. just to make that point, yeah, I'm not super strong. And even you, you'll be like, I think you're strong. Somebody right. made fun of that. <laughs> Somebody yeah. made fun of that. Oh, like, I yeah, think yeah. you're strong. And yeah. you know why you think I'm strong? Because you do jujitsu with me. Yeah. And I have technique in jujitsu. And I also have medium twitch muscles. True. I have medium twitch muscles. So I can hold a lot of pressure for a long time. Okay. That makes sense to me. Not, not explosive. Would you say I'm explosive? I would not say you're explosive. Would you say I'm strong? Yes, sir. I yes, that's it. Because I have me. And I remember, I don't quote me on this, but the, the, the theory or the discovery of medium twitch muscles came out in like the 90s. And before that, I would be a guy, oddly enough, I wouldn't win a long distance race. And I also wouldn't win a sprint mm. in my platoon. But if you put a 40 pound or a 60 pound rucksack on me, I would win. Or I would be in much closer to the front. Right, right. Why is that? Medium twitch. Not super strong, not super endurance, somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Which, is a, which means I don't really have the genetic capability to be snatching double body weight or whatever. Like that's just, it's very hard for me to do that. Yeah. Um, so, so there you have it. Um, there's some funny, he, he reads, the dude Derek reads a, a bunch of the little quotes from inside. There's a Reddit thread on this as yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 100, grams of mil, 100 milligrams of accountability. <laughs> Efficacious dose of discipline. Scoop of getting after it. Mm. Ownership deployed. HGH for that huge head. <laughs> and he says all kinds of funny stuff. Alpha as fuck composure, bro. <laughs> So there's that. Um, he, so then he talks about the fact that I work out three times a day. And then puts the own spin on it of working out hardcore three times a day. Right. Which is a lot different than me saying, ah, I work out, I lift, mm -hmm. I run or surf, and I do jujitsu. And I do that every day. That's... That's that's a that's an accurate thing. Mm -hmm. This isn't like, hey, I'm blasting legs and squats in the morning, right. and then I'm doing freaking deadlifts at noon, mm -hmm. and then I'm doing power cleans in the evening, and I'm doing all those for max reps or psycho metcons. Right. I'm not doing that. Yeah. So that's misleading. And if that's somebody that took me saying, hey, you know, I, I guess it's wrong for me to say I work out three times a day. What would be good is like uh, I exercise three times a day. Right. Or something like that. Um, so I feel like I miss, might have misled uh, Derek on that one. But it's also the title. You know, that's the title of this yeah. Reddit thread Reddit. that he's talking about. Yeah. Um, it says five hours of sleep a night. And I, look, I don't need to sleep a lot. That is, that is a fact. Um, it's not even a good fact. It's just the reality of the situation. The the other day, like if I go to bed early, I wake up early. Yeah. You know, it's not like I go to bed and if I go to bed at at nine, I wake up at four thirty, or I go to bed at eight and I wake up at four thirty. I don't. My body doesn't need that much sleep. Um, you know, there's all kinds of little funny stories from when I was in the teams about me not sleeping. Yeah. Uh, I know sleep is good for you. I, I I usually sleep more than five hours a night. I usually go to bed around. 10 and I wake up at 4 30. So what is that? That's six and a half hours of sleep, bro. So again, do I sometimes go to bed at 11? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I do. I sometimes I have a hard time falling asleep. So I don't sleep a lot. I've never slept a lot. Uh, two out of my four kids don't need a lot of sleep genetically. My wife won't get out of bed until like there's an emergency. <laughs> Because she's genetically <laughs> different, right? Um, so that's a genetic thing. This isn't this isn't a chemically induced thing. Um, 
but that's rare though and a, a lot of people don't know that that it's called fast sleepers there's there's yeah. like this it's kind of an, an anomaly or whatever where yeah you just essentially you go through your cycles yep. of sleep just quicker yep. and it's from what i understand yep and yeah so so the sleep thing again if you're taking that as an indication of like oh he must be on the sauce yeah. like that's probably why he got that feeling. Hey, well, if this guy doesn't sleep much. So there's already a couple things that are not accurate. And again, I can understand totally how these conclusions can be made if you kind of look surface. Oh, works out three times a day. Oh, that means he's doing deadlifts, right. squats, and freaking power cleans. Right, right. No, I'm not doing that. And if I did that, I would be wrecked, right? Yeah. I mean, I would be wrecked just like a normal human. Yeah. Um, and what's the other thing? So there's that. Oh, yeah, and then there's the numbers. If I'm on that path, these are realistic numbers, you yeah. know? Yeah, and it's it. I think he took the numbers that we were talking about, which were really what they were, were like estimated like predictions, mm-hmm. almost like a, they weren't hard and fast numbers. Yeah, yeah. Like even when you were like, when I said, if you can do four wheels for 10, that's good, yeah. good. That's yeah. literally what I said. <laughs> and here's the thing, and I was explaining to Carrie too when we were talking about that. Might have been Squatty Lewis. I was telling tell you, or both. Whatever. Dude, you went deep. You went back. Got witnesses. Bro, I had Squatty to. Lewis is coming to the stand. I had to. <laughs> Bro, the, the thing was on record at yep. this point. Yep. You know, so I'm like, shoot, let me confirm. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so I'm thinking back to when I was 22 years old, mm-hmm. squatting hardcore. I think we we're doing two or three sessions a week of squats: one high rep, one medium, one low rep, and it was like, and it was a hardcore workout. I was 240 at the time. So I'm thinking, let me base on when I was really into the numbers on squat. Let me base it on that. Because right? if you remember in the video, I say, what do you weigh? What do you walk around at? Yep, your weight? And yep. you said 230. So th- I'm thinking, okay, 230. By the way, I, I weighed 231 this morning. Okay, there you go. Um, not considering these three things, which I did consider in later on in the video mm-hmm. if you watch it, where first off, you're older than 22 years old. Two, you go all the way down. Yeah, I was going parallel squat, which was an mm-hmm. issue that we were, we were laughing yeah. at or whatever. Which is also something that you now have adjusted your mindset yes, towards. Yes, sir. Because going in the, hole, in the hole, as we used to call it back in the day, which is below parallel, yeah. and that's another thing you just reminded me, uh, Derek. In the video says like, hey, if you're just walking around and just bang out 405 like it's nothing at 45 years old, right. that's that's an indicator and. I I can't do that. Mm. Now, if I was like, hey, you know what? Oh, it's it's squat season, right? Which yeah. squat season for me is in the is in the kind of spring time, <laughs> right? Hell yeah! Because in the summer, I'm getting ready to go hunting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In I the mountains, understand. right? Yeah. At least that's been the last few years. So that means I'm running, I'm rucking, and then that carries into uh, well, this particular year, I've been doing these um, step ups with mm. the forty five five pound plate. Um, getting ready to do that Chad 1000, uh, which just extended that type of workout a little bit into November. And then all of a sudden, we're like getting ready for the winter time in the mountains, which means front squats and uh, plyometrics and stuff. Sure. And then in the springtime, it's like, oh, you know, it's squat season. So I, it's misleading again. I'm sorry if I misled led, uh, Derek to think, hey, Jocko's just gonna walk up cold to a squat right, rack and just right. put on 405 and just knock it out of the park, you know, 10, 12 reps, whatever. And well, and it, I think, and I think this is important where when you watch that video and you really watch it and say, okay, what are we saying right here? Mm-hmm. When I said, um, and my standard was, was kind of off, which I realized later in the video, the where if I say, if you can do 405, um, for 10, that's good, good, right? At mm-hmm. 230, because I'm making a reference yep. to a 22 year old me yep. at 240. Um, then after, and then you were like, I think I'm there, if not about there, right? So, okay, so when I could, when you said that, mm-hmm. I think that's what people latched on to. Mm-hmm. But when you said that, you were like, that was just like estimate. It was yeah. obvious you had never done that. You had never like, that was a projection given what you know you have done and then you made an estimation and then yeah. you're like, no, about there. So no, I probably couldn't get it. Yeah. But maybe like under there, if I had a good day in squat during yeah. squat season, I, I maybe could get it. That's that's how what I got from and it. And then I said, 
Later, I said Later that on. would freaking hurt. Me. Exactly right. The yeah. more you think yeah, about, the more it, I thought about it, same with me. The same with me. I was like, in I was like four oh five. Then I was like, wait a second. I was twenty two years old. Yeah, I wasn't going all the way down. Let's then I was just like, put it on the record. Four oh five for ten is savage. All the way down. You're, yeah, you're if you're going ass to grass, four oh five for ten is savage. Is savage exactly right? And then was, so then right after I was like, well, if you can do three wheels for ten, that's good. That's good. Yeah, and. Then you were like, well, there's, there's a, big a big difference. difference. And there and is then, a big difference. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I was like, but you're going all the way down. And, and I'm considering all these things that I'm co- that come up in my mind like that. It's like, bro, that's a bad comparison, mm-hmm. what I said. And then you started thinking even more about it. And you're like, you're like 10 would hurt me. 10 were, mm-hmm. Like kind of you concluded, no, I can't get the 10. Like yeah. maybe it seemed like I could when I thought about it at first. But after a while, it's like, no, that would hurt me. Like I couldn't get the 10. Um and then you're like, oh, I'm not even that strong or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. Then you went through that. Mm-hmm. But um, put it this way. There's a difference between really how we said it and what was going on there. There's a difference between that and then you saying, you know what? Yes, I could get the 405 for 10 or actually not the 405, right under the 405. I could get that for 10 officially like we were saying it on a podcast. Yeah. There's way di- it's, yeah, it's way, way different. different. Yeah. And <laughs> And if there was no difference, then you could be like, oh, well, Jocko can or can't. Let's say he, Jocko can't do that. Oh, he just lied on his podcast. That's not true. Yeah. That is literally <laughs> not true. It was a whole different thing. You know, yeah. it's kind of like, hey, like if you ask me how quick I could do a mile right now. Oh. And I was like, oh, I've been running a mile in freaking <laughs> years before time, you know, like to know. How, and then I was like, oh, let me estimate given what I ran it last time I ran. And then after you think about it and all this stuff, and then it, then let's say the next day I ran the mile and I freaking couldn't get it at all. Oh, you lied, you know, kind of a thing. Uh, I didn't lie. That's for, That was the conclusion I made, my flimsy conclusion. Yeah. Not to say your conclusion was flimsy, but I'm saying it was based on other factors yeah. rather than the actual and, numbers. And one more factor that was based on is me just trying to make you feel weak <laughs> by being like, yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, you, like right away when I was like, oh, I did um, whatever I did. And then you're like, how deep? Like first thing. <laughs> and even when we were talking about 40 time, you were like, what kind of time? Yeah. Like, you were, yeah. I was on a roll. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we get through with those three sort of misleading things. And again, I, when I say misleading, I'm saying m- I'm misleading. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's misleading if you do a surface study of me and you see works out three times a day, gets five hours of sleep a night, and can freaking lift 405 for 10, squat, ass the grass, all those things which Derek cor- you know, heard and correctly heard them. That's what, that's what was being said, and is, or that's what he saw. And he was like, all those things together, pff, this dude's, that's one of the things that made him lean towards. And again, to his credit, the whole time he, every time he'd say like, mm, yeah, then he'd kind of back off yeah, a little bit as well. He could be wrong. He, he um, could say that. Uh, there's a bunch of other comments in here that were interesting. Uh, probably Natty now, but no doubt he was cycling when he was active duty. Totally wrong. Uh, spec ops love gear, meaning spec the guys in special operations all juice or love juice. No, not true. And this is from a quote, former infantry guy that knew lots of Rangers on the stuff. I haven't worked with Rangers enough to do that assessment, but from my perspective, if you're willing to put your military career at risk, mm, there's not a lot of guys that are willing to do that. Mm. Um, and this guy says, hell, it was unusual to have guys not on the sauce when I was in Cav Scout for five years. Again, maybe these are guys that were going on deployment and there wasn't really strict and there was more people doing juice. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say, um, I, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I know that when I worked with the army, <laughs> these were not people that were on juice. Like, and I'm, and I'm more talking about conventional army forces. These are not guys that are on juice. So uh, yeah, I, some of that too is like, you're in the military and you see you see a freaking jacked guy that's in the SEAL teams. Guess what the guy in the SEAL teams is doing for his job? Working. It. Lifting, mm. eating correctly, getting better food. Um, another guy says, same shit as everyone else gets. They were saying that, <laughs> this guy was saying that like people in special operations get even better steroids. Like right, this right. is how just <laughs> off the rails this is. Uh, and then this guy says, same shit as everyone else gets. We aren't allowed to use gear whatsoever. People do it and everyone knows it. I mean, I didn't didn't know it. Could it be that because I was end up becoming an officer that mm-hmm. people like hid it from me and I didn't mm-hmm. know it? I guess you, I guess it could be that way. But I'll tell you, man, when you're working out with guys and training with them, and all of a sudden they just like get super strong, I would be suspect. Mm. I was very rarely suspect. Yeah. Um, 
he talks about what I looked like over the years. Mm-hmm. And here his conclusion is like, dude, the guy has just always been kind of ba- a bigger dude, mm-hmm. which is true. I weighed 174 when I showed up to Bud's. Mm-hmm. I was 19 years old. I weighed 200 at the end of my, oh, I gained 15 pounds or whatever, 11 pounds. I graduated Bud's at 185, got my first platoon. I got up, we were lifting. Our goal was to be bigger. Mm-hmm. I got up to 200, my first platoon. I got up to like 215, my second platoon. Yeah. I got up to like 220, my third platoon. And you know, these are like ages I'm getting big. I'm just getting bigger and stronger. It's like, you know, right. you went from 180 to 240, mm-hmm. right? These are prime years to get jacked. When I was competing in jujitsu, now we're talking like 96, 97, 98, I would always be around 220 and I'd cut down to 213 mm-hmm. so I could do the weight category and then the absolute. Yeah. So that was my weight back then. But again, these are not, you know, um, crazy numbers. I was at SEAL Team 2, got up to 250. How? Squatting, eating, deadlifting, more eating. Um, and that's, so he kind of says that. He kind of says that. Um, that, well, you know, he, I forget the terms he uses. There's no you know, time where he's just, you know, right. goes from being 128 pounds to 220 pounds. There's no time like that. And it's true. Yeah. That was a steady, slow progression as I got older. It got bigger until I reached about 225, 230, which is where I am right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, he couldn't find me talking about TRT. And then he found one tweet where the tweet had been deleted, but I had said, haven't tried it. Somebody probably asked me, have you ever done TRT? And Do you I remember said, that tweet? Or, you know? I don't really remember it, but he, I saw it. He right. put a clip on there, yeah. and it's definitely me. And I'm sure somebody said, hey, have you ever done TRT? And I was like, yeah, I never tried it. Because there was a tweet below it that said something like, oh, I'd hate to see Jock on more you know, testosterone. Right. Something like that. So he figured it out, and yes. And then he said that was the only, quote, horse's mouth of me saying anything about TRT, which is not that weird because I don't talk about it because I have no experience with it. Right. I don't. That's not something that comes up. Um, and, and and look, I'm not even against it. I'm 50 yeah. years old. If I get to a certain point where I'm like, yeah, you know, I feel like shit. But I'll, my doctor says to me, hey, Jocko, this is going to make you perform better and do better. Maybe I'd be like, mm, that sounds like a good idea. What I, what I don't like about it is I know that when you do that stuff, you're on it for the rest of your life, which to me is bad. I, mean. I don't want to be relying on anything. I don't want... I would rather be able to make my own testosterone at a lower level than go on fake, to go on other Such. testosterone and then have to be on it for the rest of my life. Like, I don't like that idea. Mm. To me, that's sort of a dependency, which I don't like. So, but, but again, when I'm 60 and all of a sudden I'm really weak or whatever, mm. I have issues, I'm, you know, I, I'll be like, hey guys, I'm going on TRT right now. Yeah. I want to be stronger, <laughs> yeah. which would be fine. Uh, so that's why maybe he hasn't found a lot about me talking about it. And, and again, I got friends that do TRT, that talk about TRT. I've just never done it. Yeah. If I did, I wouldn't be ashamed of it. I'd be like, hey, this is the situation I was in and this is what I did. Yeah. You know, and when you start going down this path, it's like, mm, I mean, if I'm trying to like stay young, maybe I should start by dyeing my hair black, which my hair is gray. I don't yeah. give a shit. Probably a good idea. Yeah, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Doesn't matter to me. No, you're here to win. Yeah. Um, then he finds a, a picture of me, or there's a picture of me on like the Reddit thing, and it's me and t- t- Ted, uh, Tim Kennedy, and we're sitting there talking or, or whatever, and we just got done with a workout, and there was <laughs> there was some funny comments. <laughs> It says, looking solid, dude. Another guy says, alpha head, bro. Fucking sick cranium. (laughs) (laughs) Which is, you know, funny. And somebody says, look at his jawline. He never needed juice. He's a natural gorilla. He's got gorilla. He's got Shrek genetics. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, big, not abnormally ripped, which is totally true. Mm -hmm. I remember that that magazine article came out about me in Success Magazine. And they said I was a ripped 225 pounds of muscle. And I went and did a fact check publicly about that article and said, I'm not a ripped 225, I'm a well-marbled 230, <laughs> which is the truth. <laughs> um, somebody said, just by his head. I don't know what's up with my head. I don't know either. Somebody I mean, said, just by his head, you can tell he's alpha as fuck. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> but see, some people are pretty, like these people are just saying, hey, this, if you look at the, they had a picture of me when I'm probably 25 mm-hmm. and a picture of me now. And people are like, yeah, look at him when he's 25. He's, he's, his head, his jaw, because you know, when people do steroids, their jaw gets bigger, their cranium gets, or their, uh, their brow, like what is this? Their forehead or yeah. their, their eyebrow bone or whatever that yeah, is, yeah. gets like bigger and more prominent. Mm. This is just the way I look. And I've, I've looked that way since I was, you know, in my 20s, in my early 20s. Um, and this guy says not necessarily cranked looking. Oh, no, this is what this is what uh, Derek says. Not necessarily. He's, he's like, oh, he's not necessarily cranked looking, but a very fucking built dude, a solid human who would be very tough to move. Yes. If that makes any fucking sense. <laughs> yes, it does. He make looks sense, mean. Derek. He looks tough as El Tito Ortiz's superior older brother. <laughs> Which is, I've, I've trained with Tito. I'm not superior to Tito. Tito is a jacked dude. Like, what did Tito fight at? Tito fought 205. at two, 205. Yeah. I was gonna say either 185 or 205. Tito fought at 205. Tito was a freaking monster. Tito's 6'2 yeah. and huge. He's a monster, bro. And so yeah, I'm just saying I'm not uh, genetically uh, or physically superior to Tito Ortiz, and he Tito Ortiz also had like the explosive type muscle, right? Mm-hmm. I have the freaking slow, the uh, slow, the medium twitch, the medium twitch. Mm-hmm. But all these things, I, I thought that might that section was kind of leaning towards like, hey, this is just a kind of a big dude right. that that literally eats steak, drinks milk, <laughs> and lifts weights. That's right. what I that's what I've been doing for a freaking long time, right? Yeah, this is. I'm not a guy that like goes on. Go, hey, I'm gonna work out for. A while. I'm not that guy. I'm yeah. not a guy that goes. Hey, I'm gonna work out for a little while and then I'm gonna you know right. uh, get into painting. Right. No, I've been lifting. Yeah. You know, yeah. whether it's calisthenics, whether it's plyometrics, whether it's squatting, whether it's cleans, whether it's doing pull ups. Like that's all in the. That's all in the freaking in the element. Yeah. You know. Um. Then he goes in this weird tangent into jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Uh. Got it. Got a thing with me and going against Jeff Monson, yep. and Jeff Monson, is, is a fr- he calls him all kinds of <laughs> calls him all kinds of funny <laughs> yeah. names, uh, and and Jeff Monson is an incredible grappler. He's a monstrous guy, who's pop positive for steroids before. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I shouldn't say that. I'm quite, I'm quite confident that he has utilized. Um, steroids is like <laughs> not yeah so so he sees me going against him and what's interesting about that video there's a video of me versus Jeff Monson unfortunately the video is two minutes and 30 seconds long mm. that was a triple overtime match mm. so I forget what the first it was like a seven minutes and then two minute two minute two minute overtime no, and it got edited down we had a pretty good scrap and Jeff Monson's a better grappler than me and he's stronger than me and he beat me like yeah. that's what happened he mentioned how like um, he's a he goes oh he's a UFC champ oh he goes no 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 he's he's not a UFC champ he's just an eighty I don't think he said a, just an ADCC <laughs> yeah. or he goes he's ADCC champ kind of like oh he's only yeah. an ADCC that's more significant by <laughs> the way grappling. than US, <laughs> UFC exactly right if you're ADCC Abu Dhabi Abu Dhabi Combat Club champion that means in grappling no punches no kick mm-hmm. in what you guys were doing yeah, he's yeah, the best yeah, guy yeah, in the world yeah, straight yeah, up yeah, yeah. and if you're the champion yeah. which he was and i will say the two minutes and 30 seconds of that video i look horrible like i see me now and i'm like god i sucked and that's what we always the goal is always to be bet to be able to beat you six months ago that's always the goal mm-hmm. and that's a 15 year old video and i look at it and go god what kind of shot was that oh my god you look like crap why didn't you do this that's just what it feels like when you watch old videos of yourself. So, um, I was in that tournament, by the way. It was my first tournament I oh, ever did. Jack. Yep. Yeah, I lost to Jeff Monson. Um, but what's interesting is he's he makes this argument that like if you're going to compete, if you're competing in this stuff, which I was, right. why would you not do steroids? Like everyone's in. He makes this whole thing about how jujitsu, there's no testing for steroids, and I don't know if they do now, but back then. There sure as hell wasn't any no. testing for steroids. No. Um, but he also says my physique's not that much different. Yeah. And I probably weighed in at that tournament at 220 because I was probably only did heavyweight at that tournament. I probably weighed 220. Mm-hmm. And he said there's no indication of the deployment of anabolics. And then he, but then he can't, he, like, he doesn't want to believe that. He says, well, it'll lead you to believe that maybe he's just using it for recovery. It's like, <laughs> that guy wanted me to want to juice so hard. Uh, and then he says, or he's never used it. 
Right. So again, I think he's a little bit conflicted. Um, but he says, look, if, if, there's ju- if there's so much juice in the jiu-jitsu world, why wouldn't you do it? And here's one thing. I wasn't really a competitor. Yeah. You know, I would, if there was a tournament, well, when I was going to college, um, from like 2000 to 2003, we competed all the time. And, and actually before that, when I was at Fabio Santos, man, we com- Dean and I competed all the time. We were going to every tournament we could go to. We were competing yeah. all the time. But, you know, by the time 2000, but once the war st- started actually, is when I c- started competing less and less because I wanted to be like ready to go to war. Yeah. But for him, it didn't make any sense to be competing at that level, which I yeah. was competing at a very high level. You know, I did the ADCC trials. Um, for him, it, it and he used the words. He's like, I'm highly se- skeptical that you, that I wouldn't that Jago wouldn't try it. You know, right. which again, this whole time I'm active duty in the military. By the way, I have a yeah. job. I have a job that I love. I have guys that I'm supposed to be leading and taking care of. And if I get shit canned from the teams because <laughs> I wanted to be a little bit bigger, and by the way, I was already pretty big. Mm-hmm. I wasn't like 158. Like God, I'm. I, I wish I had more presence. No, I, was like, I was freaking 220, 225. Sure. Um, also with jujitsu, I think it, it's it's fair to know this. Where just because you compete in jujitsu doesn't mean you're you're a competitor pursuing champion yeah, level. Yeah. Like even if you come, you can compete on it, especially back then. Mm-hmm. Even I mean now it's really like. There are competitors, and then there's everybody else. No matter if you're a black belt, oh, yeah. high level, whatever. You know, so a guy like in your position, you have a job, you're active duty, military. Yeah. Um, loved jujitsu, loved it, loved but competing. But it's not even the number one thing on my priority list. Nope, not even by a long shot. No, I'm you, in the fucking teams, bro. If you <laughs> if you wrote out your goals, even even if you narrowed it down to your jujitsu goals, it probably wouldn't be to be world champion. It's usually not that. Now there there's a large group of guys that that is their goal. Mm-hmm. Then you might start seeing, okay, this guy's on steroids, this guy's on steroids, because he's pursuing a very specific goal, and he has to go hard, as hard as he possibly can. And he's going against guys that are who, who not are, testing. Exactly right. He's going against guys in the same boat. Exactly, exactly right. But the fact is, a lot of us, even high, super high-level guys, they're not in that boat. Until you shift your goal to be champion, champion, it's just a different yeah. type of jujitsu person. I was a hobbyist in jujitsu. Yeah, that and was my hobby. I was very passionate about my hobby. And believe me, you're not going. I'm not going to the competition saying I don't care if I win or lose. No, I'm freaking trying to win. Yeah, but I'm not missing a block of training with my platoon yeah. because I'm going to go and train more. That wasn't happening. Yeah, it exactly. It wasn't right. even close. I'm just saying, if you're not in the in the the jujitsu world, it it might you might not know the nuance. You know, you not, might not know the difference between. Mm-hmm. Even when you say hobbyist, mm-hmm. that kind of from the outside might sound like, oh, you just do it on the weekends and whatever. No. Like, you can be a hardcore hobbyist. Hobbyist oh, yeah. is every day it's physically possible to get it done. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> and um, and then you have guys who are just competitors where it's like, I have jujitsu and I'm going to do as good as I can possibly do in jujitsu, hopefully become champion. And, and everything else mm-hmm. is secondary. Yeah. That's like, no matter how good or junk they are, that's like, that's the two pursuits, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so he goes through the jujitsu thing, and again, that to him makes him lean towards, I must have at least tried it so I could compete with these guys. But like you just said, I'm not trying to win the tr- world championship. I'm trying to win, but I'm not. that's not the number one priority in my life. And then he goes on this thing about uh, some guy named Dave Bul- Bulzerian. Dan Bul- Bulzer- Bulzerian. Okay, so this guy apparently went to Bud's at some point, and he, this guy who went to Bud's said he did steroids and said a bunch of people, a lot of quote, a lot of people did it. Which again, this is weird. This is a this guy just went to Bud's and he got didn't make it. So you don't even know what kind of person this is. I don't know why this he's even brought into the fold here, mm-hmm. other than you know he's like, oh, this guy Dave Bolzerian said he did it. It's like okay, well this guy didn't wasn't a seal made it didn't make it through training. He did say it seems that he uh, me, you you could get kicked out. This guy. This guy that went to Bud's mentioned that, oh, you would get kicked out if you got caught. So right there, what kind of freaking, uh, you know, that's like like right there. That's all you need to know. Anybody that knows me, like, oh, you want to be in the SEAL teams? And there's a risk you get kicked out yeah. for doing steroids. By the way, 
when I was going through SEAL training, I was passing the evolutions. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't like, hey, I got a, I got a, a freaking 27, 20 on the run. I want to get that down to 26, 40. And I'm willing to risk getting right. kicked out of the Navy to shave 20 seconds off my runtime or 40 seconds. You're never mm-hmm. going to do that. Yeah. I would never do that. It's a stupid thing to do. So again, and then, and then the same guy says that a th- said that a third of the people were juicing, which again, that's not possible. I could understand if more people than I think are on steroids, I could understand that. Mm-hmm. But to say one third of people in special operations are on steroids, that is not, that is, that cannot be true. Cause I would have known a lot of them. Yeah, I well, spent my entire adult life in special operations. Yeah, it, yeah so. it seems like you would know more so than Dan Bilzerian and you you don't know um, Bilzerian that much, but he's kind of known for just his whole thing being just real wishy-washy, real, oh, okay. real sus, as, okay. as they say, as far as his stories and claims go. Check. Uh, Derek says that when I was in training, he goes on this rant about how when I was in training, it was less scrutinized, like steroids were less scrutinized, and I was like, I, and he starts bringing up Arnold Schwarzenegger. I was like, bro, like I didn't go through, I didn't go through SEAL training in the freaking seventies when when <laughs> steroids weren't even, you know, we're just on the open market. So I don't know what that point was. And I guess he he tied some connection. I guess there was some big steroid Olympic thing that got a lot of scrutiny brought on it. But again, I didn't really, I don't really know much about that. Uh, I w- I if anyone in my actual SEAL training class did steroids, I'd be totally shocked. No, I never even heard anyone talk about it uh, at all. So. Then he goes on this thing about how my life is about stress, resiliency, and grit through adversity, and a lack of sleep, and he's even talking about lack of food, fasting sometimes, mm-hmm. and then he says whilst, and I like that he used this word, he says whilst maintaining a high level of performance. That's what sort of my, my life is like. Mm-hmm. And he says that it's like, um, that that I would benefit highly from exogenous androgens, which he yeah, asks. So he gets this thing about how you know I'm all about being strong, but going through adversity and having stress resilience, and and he says would this guy would benefit highly from exogenous androgens. Obviously pretty telling in my opinion. That's what he says. So he's like this guy like is all about the stress and getting through this stuff That's pretty telling in my opinion. That's what he says. So again, it's not a It's not a it's not a It's one of those things that makes him lean a little bit more in that direction And then he goes on this thing about how I was going against sauce fiends (laughs) back in their primes Oh talking about Munson and not using shit Mm -hmm. when even the Gracie's were using shit and he s- talks about the fact that Hoist Gracie tested po- positive for anabolic, which I, I think Hoist tested positive for anab- for steroids when he was like in the UFC or something. Right? I don't know, but I, no, I think it was I think it was later. I think it was one of these sort of older Hoist fights, right? Right. Some yeah, different. That's right. I don't think in it was an UFC MMA match. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so he, he said. So then Derek says it's hard to imagine this guy's not dabbled before. To go into to go into matches with literal houses and not thought maybe I should get a bit of help it, It's it, obviously crossed his mind a couple times. I would imagine yeah. and again oddly enough Getting kicked out of the seal teams all I needed to hear was You know that one story when I was younger about hey, they take all the batches they test them and if you pop if they if they find anyone of those batch t- test positive they test them all individually you'll get kicked out I'm cool done Mm. so this wasn't this this wasn't this temptation that was on the back of my you know on my shoulder all the time you should get a little bit stronger and by the way i wasn't getting out muscled on the jujitsu mats right monson wasn't tossing me around yeah no at no time did i feel like a little bit more strength would make me better i was To be contended with. Also, too, with the steroids in jiu-jitsu, a lot of times, sure, the guys are a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, but like how you kind of alluded to, that's less of a factor. Like the fa- mm-hmm. the real factor with steroids guy versus no steroids guy is the guy can just turn up the pace and keep it going and wear out the guy way quicker and where the guy's just less effective because there's way less energy. 
um, more so than mm-hmm. and well, he wasn't doing that either. Like they, he didn't like turn up the pace where you couldn't keep up. Nope. It, that wasn't going on nope. either. It was it was just simply a jujitsu match that he ended up winning. Yep. Not not by a lot, like you know, in the overtime or whatever. Yep. But it was it was clearly not a match between steroids versus not steroids. It wasn't no. that he didn't beat me because of strength. Yeah. He beat now if I'd have been ten times or three times stronger than him, sure. But he beat me because he's a better grappler than me. He he wrestled. He's he's the ADCC champion of the world. (laughs) That's why I got beat. Mm -hmm. Um, And let's see. He he goes. He goes back to the he goes back to the the skinny knees video. Sure. And starts kind of breaking that down a little bit. He says that I'm five eleven two thirty which is what we kind of discuss on that. Mm-hmm. And then he says this interesting thing. He says he says that I, Jocko, was built like this the the whole time, the entirety of his historical data represents. <laughs> when he looks at me good. and sees pictures of me when I'm younger, yeah. I always kind of look this way. He says there's no massive aberration in body composition, always been a husky, mild house of a dude, <laughs> which is, <laughs> I would say, a fact, factually accurate statement. Yeah, okay. Uh, Goes, goes. We already talked about the four hundred five for ten. He kind of does a little bit of a deeper dive than that, and we kind of already just talked through that. That's a, a shit talking combined with an assessment, and estimation, an estimation, and that was that. Um, well, he he also says, he says I can't imagine this is legit when he says I haven't tried it. I would probably call bullshit on it. So many times he would have benefited benefited from it so much more than 99% of other humans. It's hard to believe you would just grit through it with your fucking natural crashed hormones, which ultimately will be with the amount of stress you are undergoing with the amount of sheer environmental factors that he has imposed upon himself. (laughs) So he's saying that just the life I've lived has been stressful and hard on my mental status, hard on my hormones and my hormones are all probably jacked up. So why would why would I try and grit through this yeah. with my own, what does he call it? Fucking natural crashed hormones. <laughs> and uh, what is what is this one? Yeah, so so that's what he's made that's what it makes him think. Yeah. And he thinks there's just no way that it makes sense for me to not do that. Um, he get, Then he finds a video of me shooting an arrow. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> he says, he, he's like, oh yeah, and here's, here's a video of him with no shirt on, and it, it's he's shooting an arrow with his alpha fucking head. <laughs> yep. So that was kind of fun, funny. Um, some he reads through some more comments that I'm a genetic outlier, that it's TRT. One person says sauced out of his mind. <laughs> yeah, man. Another guy says he's fifty. Definitely some exogenist exo, how do you say that? Ex, exogenous exogenous compounds in play. Someone else says steroids take Jocko. Someone says this Jocko wouldn't risk his career. That's an accurate statement. That's that's the most. That that probably is the root for me of never doing steroids or any other drugs. At least for the 20 years that I was in the in the SEAL teams, I'm not risking that. Mm-hmm. And then I get out, and who? Wh- what am I doing? Am I getting beat up on the jiu-jitsu mat? No. Am I weak? No. Am I having a hard time getting out of bed? No. I feel f- freaking great. Yeah. So why am I all of a sudden thinking, you know, you and I, you and I were training hardcore. Were you ever were you ever thinking to yourself, well, you know, I could just kind of power out of this if Jocko gets me. You know what I mean? No. I didn't feel, oh, I better get stronger Mm-mm. so I can do better against Echo. Um so that's kind of kind of what what he what he says. So I think this is my um he says he says something like his that odds are um d- he Derek Ends up saying that he thinks I'm, you know, used steroids in the past, and he only uses the word dabbles, but and is on TRT right now. I think he says good, and I, and I think the reason why he, 
I think he was leaning towards. I think throughout the video, he kept saying things like, well, you know, he's always been this big and he's not t- t- ripped. He's saying all these things that kind of make him think no. Yeah. But then I think that that the, the people that he interacts with all the time, like who's his friends and his group, it didn't even make sense to him that I would compete in jiu-jitsu and not right. do steroids or at least consider them. That didn't even make sense to him. Yeah. So for him to look at me and look at the training that I do and the fact that I'm 50 years old and think, yeah, this guy's gotta be on TRT or whatever, or, or is likely on TRT, I think that's just the group of people that he talks to, that he's around, that's what his experience has been, and it's just it's just a separate world than mine. Yeah. And that's what he thought. And the fact of the matter is, I ain't. Yeah. I'm not. I've never. I've never done any drugs. Yeah. And you know what I'm on? Milk. <laughs> I'm on joint warfare. I'm on steak. Yeah. Um. I mean, elk. The Hell elk yeah. has been delivered to the house. The elk is going down. Um. Yeah. So you had your uh like the record so and because this was a significant part too about the claim of the numbers of squatting and whatever. Mm-hmm. So consider this. So now you know, right? Because you went back to your actual records. Yep. You did three hundred five for twenty. Yep. Right. So I guess the question is, and and I'm not saying for you to answer. I'm saying for us to kind of consider as far as claims go. Uh, if you can do, if someone, anyone, anybody, no matter how big or small, if they can do three hundred five full rep squats for twenty, do you think they could do four hundred five? For ten, the, you know, there's a little or chart. Close to it. Do you know there's a little charts that they make for this kind of thing? Yeah, and, and I don't know what the how that would work the thing out. Is, those aren't that accurate though, because you need a certain type of muscle yeah. performance I for higher ups. I don't know. Low. I don't know. Yeah, so that's re- and of course not. Neither do I. Yeah. No, we don't. But if you estimate, you know, like especially back when I used to do, I never really got into consistent twenty reps for any exercise. Four hundred five is heavy. I would say 375 is in the game. You think? I think. I think you, that's a. You, yeah. Yep. But even that's not. I wouldn't bet money on it. Yeah. You I wouldn't bet know. a lot of money on it. Right. You know. Yeah, but if you're, let's say, if me and you were like, you know what, we're gonna do this. We're not gonna film. Maybe we are. We will film. I don't know. Whatever. And we're gonna be like, hey, we're gonna do today. We're gonna do our PR for 10. What are you gonna go for? You got one shot. What are you gonna go for? Mm-hmm. And if you think. Fucking, I'm putting on 405 because I think I can get, you know, like you're not going to put on 450 yeah, if yeah. you don't think you can get it. If you think I can get it and you say, I think I can get that, then yeah, that's within the, the claim of not being like BS or whatever. Yeah. It's an estimation. Not crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's not crazy. It's not crazy. Right on. All right. Well, that's it. Um, Speaking of Mulk, speaking of joint warfare, speaking of krill oil, speaking of discipline, jockofuel.com. We talked a lot about jujitsu. You should train jujitsu. Yes, sir. Not about strength. Strength is not. Uh, it's not out of the equation. Oh, yeah, it's in the equation. It's in the sure. equation. Yeah, but it's not the total equation. Technique is a more powerful part of the equation. You made a good point though about like the circles that you kind of hang with, mm-hmm. the people that that you hang around, the community you're yep. in, or whatever. Where, um. Like if you're used to seeing people on mm-hmm. steroids or whatever, it starts to become more and more like it feels more likely that, of course, they are. Of course, they are. You can just take yeah, one yeah, or yeah. two little things, even if it's kind of out of context. It's like, OK, I'm not going to be surprised if that person is. But it's the same on the other side, too, where and I was like this when I was young, like I, especially with them um, with other drugs like cocaine. Mm-hmm. Right? I never tried cocaine ever. I probably went, when I was living in Hawaii, I never even seen cocaine before. <laughs> <laughs> I came to the mainland and still. Really, I haven't really seen that much cocaine. One time I saw a guy, and I worked at the nightclub, by the way, but it just in my brain, I hadn't been around it. So I'm thinking, of course, no one's here doing cocaine. That's crazy. <laughs> That's the stuff you see in the movies. <laughs> One time I saw a guy get out of his car and he had like cocaine on his nose still. And I was like baffled, like, oh, my gosh, this is such a big deal. Yeah. Meanwhile, my friend's like, oh. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. what's the big deal kind of a thing? And I'm like, OK, and it kind of dawns on you if you're not used to it. Or, or if you're really used to it, you're, yeah, it's just a foregone conclusion. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. It's almost surprising if you don't see it kind of a thing. Yep. So that makes it, that totally makes sense to yep. me. And even now that you bring this up, even in the SEAL teams, like I mentioned, there was a, I had a sister platoon one time. That was some of the guys in there that had a, a clique of guys in there that were into, that, that did juice. And so 
if one of my friends would have been like, bro, I'm gonna go on the sauce, I'd be I'd be very surprised by that. Yeah. But if one of those guys was going on the sauce, I'd think, oh, well, that's their crew. Yeah. So and it's the same thing with TRT, mm-hmm. right? There's a lot of people that go on to TRT. A lot of them. And I know a lot of them. Yeah. And and so to think, oh well, if you're assu- if that guy's already assuming that a bunch of the people that I hang around with are on TRT, well, why wouldn't I be on TRT too? And well, the fact of the matter is, I'm not. <laughs> and it goes for lifting weights, like the numbers that guys put up. Like, okay, so in Hawaii, people are just bigger, mm-hmm. just nor. And it's part of the culture, by the mm-hmm. way. But I've seen guys, you know, bench five wheels, and and a lot of them too. Like four four oh five yeah. was like, if you can do four oh five, you're like, yeah, okay, you can, they can do four oh five. It's good, but everyone's seen that before. Yep. You and know? in the SEAL teams, there's not too many guys that. Number one, bench press very much, not bench press very often, and certainly anyone that's bench pressing five plates in the SEAL teams is the, a freaking super strong dude. Oh, yeah. Everyone knows that dude. Yeah. Everyone goes, oh, dude, he can bench freaking 500. Everybody knows that. Yeah. It's so rare. So, yeah, same thing. If someone says, oh, yeah, that guy can bench 500, and it's, it's talking about a guy in a platoon, that would be a lot harder for me to believe unless I knew the guy. Right. And so. what if you've never seen, and think about who I was hanging with from the year 1995 all the way up until 2001 when I left Just Hawaii. jacked football all players. All football players, yeah. exactly right. These big Samoans and stuff and whatever. I'm thinking back to the numbers. My friend Jeff Ulbrich, who's mm-hmm. like, he, he played for the 49ers. He was like, he was one of my friends and he was a big, strong guy. And I remember like later on after he moved away or whatever and after I lived here for a while. And I remember thinking back, wait, Jeff ran a 4-5 he was 255 pounds and 6'1". That's huge. Mm. That's an animal of a again. human being. Say those again. Around a 4, four five forty, which a is... A 4? 4, five. Yes, sir. A 4, five yeah. forty. 40. And how much did he weigh? 255. This is a mutant. Yeah. And he's 6'1". Here's the thing. Yeah. When I remember Jeff, yeah, he was big and strong and an animal or whatever, but not that. Mm. When I'm thinking about that, now I'm thinking that's an animal. But when you're in that community, mm-hmm. when guys are like 6'3", 305 mm-hmm. rolling around and when they hit you you just fucking die for <laughs> three days you know and that's the norm yeah and guys go in the weight room and like they don't even warm up and they put two wheels on there and they're yeah. just like awkwardly doing it like they've never benched before but they can do it because they're just so natural and that's kind of the norm compare that to if you've never seen anyone bench 405 before mm-hmm. you see four plates on the thing you're like oh my gosh i can't believe that guy did that like yeah. give me a better explanation to how that's possible, you know? I had a I had a CB chief that was with me in Ramadi and he was jerked monster guy. His name was Biggie. <laughs> that, <laughs> I mean, that makes sense right? to me completely. But yeah, he was he was throwing up three fifteen on the bench. Honestly, it looked like if I put a, if I had the bar. Yeah. Like that's what he looked like. Jacking three fifteen for his warm up. Yeah. So and and because again in the SEAL teams guys aren't doing that kind of weight that, yeah. guys can't and, and everybody that rumor sp- or that word spread bro Biggie was freaking benching four oh five for reps everyone shocked Derek was inquiring kind of how much you bench do you mm-hmm. remember your best bench three fifty was like my best bench ever good. and my Solid. bench my bench is weak that was always the weakest thing that I had yeah your squat is your gym. What's your best exercise? Deadlift, squat. I don't know, man. I benched a uh, four oh five. I start to. I talked to Squatty Lewis. He he said that he remembers me doing more than four oh five. I feel like I did more than four oh five. I remember specifically doing four oh five for the first time. I did three fifteen twelve times. My best. Um, two eighty five on the incline. Two eighty five. <laughs> 15 times. Yeah. That was my best. Yeah, for me, 350 was like a goal. Yeah. It was, hey, this is what I'm working towards. But I was always never good at bench. I was always had stronger pull muscles, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Deadlift yeah. or whatever. I was always seemed stronger in that area. Yeah. But my shoulder press was always my best one. Check. Yeah. All right, dude. That's it. That's it for the DMZ. Uh, appreciate y'all hanging out. Here in the DMZ with the demilitarized zone. <laughs> Appreciate it, y'all. Check it out. Jockofuel.com, originusa.com. Just go to jocko.com and get after it. We'll talk to y'all later.